God's word is truly liberating. Would the church say amen? When the Bible speaks, heaven is heard. It's the voice of God from the holy word. When the Bible speaks, people are freed. And when you're free, you're free indeed. I don't know about you, but I just feel like something good is about to happen. Would you say amen? Ladies and gentlemen, today is a great day. In uh, the 15th of October is always a, a high day in the Smiths family. Are you with me, somebody? Uh, it is when we welcome our baby Aiden Melody Smith into the world. And so I just came from a party. <laughs> a, a, a birthday party. <laughs> 
in my home with our rules and God's standards. Would you say amen? But it's certainly a great thing celebrating birthdays. And, you know, I left my daughter in high spirit, so I'm feeling good to know at least for eight years, my wife and I, we've been doing our best. And she's so contented. I mean, the kind of request she made, if she keeps that up for another three years, I'm happy. Four years. Simple things make children happy. Amen? So, Aidan, Daddy loves you very much. And I trust that God will continue to bless you. That's just your shout out tonight. Love you, sweetheart. We're happy you're eight. You're older now. God bless you. All right, all right. I understand that the 15th is a high day, a very high day. Brother Colvin, I'll be seeing you at the end to do a thing for you, you know. Pray. <laughs> Colvin shares the same date with my daughter, our singing evangelist. It seems like October is a special month. Are you me, somebody? Couples plan for October. <laughs> there are a lot of birthdays in October. Are you with me, somebody? Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know about you, but I feel good. I feel good. And, you know, God has been good to us. More persons gave their lives to Jesus today. Won't you say amen? <laughs> are you with me, somebody? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow again. And then on Sabbath, we'll be having a baptism. Now, now, now listen, don't plan to miss this weekend. I, I am seeing it is going to be grand. In fact, I understand tonight and tomorrow night, the Jamaica Church in the United States of America, New York, they are with us tonight. So we're giving you a shout out. The entire church, are you with me somebody? And I understand some more congregations will be joining us come Sabbath. Now, if I were you, I wouldn't, miss, I wouldn't miss this weekend for the world. Tomorrow night's message is titled, How Far is Too Far? How Far is Too Far? And then on Sabbath, I'm tempted to tell you, but I'll hold it one at a time. Are you with me, somebody? I'll hold it. But on Sabbath afternoon, we have a grand celebration afternoon. Are you with me, somebody? Victorious praise. We, we will be celebrating a lot of music. And thanking God for all he has done. Ladies and gentlemen, somebody's asking me about next week, but I will hold that too. But just know that God's church always has a well-organized plan. Won't you say amen? Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's message is titled, tonight's message is titled, The Oldest Trick in the Book. The Oldest Trick. In the book, loving Father and God, creator of the universe, we thank you. We praise you for all that you have done. And even as we go to your word now, may your Holy Spirit be with us. In Jesus' name, let all say, Amen and Amen. The oldest trick in the book. The oldest trick in the book. We have found ourselves in the center of a cosmic conflict where our daily decisions can affect the eternal safety of our souls. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, do you know that some people take it for granted? Uh, uh, while we cannot see what is happening behind the scenes, there is a real devil. And our daily decisions, the decisions we make daily, will affect the eternal safety of our souls. In this battle are two sides. A side that is purely good. I want, you, I want you to hear me tonight. There's a side that is purely good. When I say good, I mean real good. There's a side that is purely good. There's a side that is light. A side that is love. A side that is life. A side that is hope. A side that is joy. A side that, that is filled with peace. You know, I was reflecting on peace today. God has given his children peace. The ability to have stable minds in an unstable world. 
there's a side that is purely good. And when you're on that side, your, your mental health is intact. And then there's another side. There are two sides. There's a side that is purely evil. When I say evil, I, I mean evil. That is the side of death. That is the side of murder. That is the side of killing. That is the side of fighting and guns and, and drugs and crimes. There's a side that is purely evil. But the good thing is that we have a chance. Thank you, Jesus. To choose which side we are fighting on. We have a chance to choose which side we are fighting for. But however we twist it or turn it, I want us to understand that the fight is on. You know, a few years ago, a few, several years ago, I had the opportunity to start sitting on committees. And very often, there will, there will be, a, there will be some, some turbulent decisions to be made that requires the vote of the members of the committee. Uh, and some persons will vote for and some will vote against. And then there are those who think, I am not voting. I heard a chairman said clearly, let me somebody, not to vote is also a part of making a decision. Because your vote could have tilted for or against. So by not voting, you have voted. Are you following me somebody? Uh, some people think that, that they are going to live in between. In between good and evil. Not too churched up. And not too bad. You, you are only bad enough. Are you me somebody? For it not to be seen. And you're good enough not to look too bad. Are you me somebody? Let me say that again. Some people are good enough. They, they do enough good so that the bad won't be seen. And some people do a minimal bad so that they will appear to be good. Uh, there is nothing like an in-between. If you think you're in between, something is definitely wrong with you. <laughs> and when I said there's nothing like an in-between, I mean it. If you think you're in between, Lord have mercy. Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 to 9, and we have repeated this verse several times. The Bible says, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought, and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was there any place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, the old serpent called the devil. And Satan which deceiveth the whole world. Now, I want to make that point. Some people think they're in between. But you're either on God's side or you're on the devil's side. You're either on the side that is purely good or you're on the side that is purely evil. Are you with me, somebody? And Satan's plan is to, de to deceive the whole world. Ladies and gentlemen, his angels were cast out with him. They are two sides. Christ versus Satan. Truth versus error. Right versus wrong. God uses love to draw men. But the devil uses tricks. God uses love. But the devil uses tricks. He says to a woman, take some cocaine. Swallow that cocaine. Go to the airport. Board an aircraft. And you will get rich. Are you with me somebody? That poor woman. It has happened to several women. And several men. Who are now incarcerated. Because they were tricked. By the enemy. The enemy's plan is to take us down. Are you listening to me tonight? The devil uses tricks he puts 
us are you with me somebody in a dark room that's what the devil does he puts you in a dark room and he tells you to do as you please nobody can see he has you stealing in the dark room he has you smoking in the dark room are you with me somebody he has you gambling in the secret dark room he puts you in a dark room and he says nobody will see he hitches you with an unhealthy relationship in the dark room and things happen in the dark room and just when you get comfortable satan turns on the lights and everybody sees the devil uses tricks to depress and suppress his subjects but tricks and error will never save tricks and error will never be the solution for man tricks and error and secrecy will never help the bible says that truth saves you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free jesus is that truth and when he sets us free we are free indeed wouldn't you say amen jesus said that he is the truth and and is the only power the truth has the power to save it is the only the truth that has the power to liberate so when truth is being preached now i want to ask a straight question are we are we looking to the word for truth every night night after night so when truth is being preached satan gets a headache satan gets a nervous breakdown are you with me somebody whenever truth is being preached the devil decides he gets worried are you with me somebody from the time the devil heard that this meeting was being planned are you with me somebody from the time satan heard that the bible speaks meeting was being planned how how was this how was this team formulated uh, uh, pastor clark was doing a devotion pastor chester was was praying and i had my pen in my hand in the boardroom and and we were in a mode of prayer and it's as if god said uh, as the devotion was presented and the prayer was made the bible speaks i'll give you some more background to that before the weekend is done God is in the midst of this plan. Are you with me, somebody? Ladies and gentlemen, look at this. Look at this. As soon as the devil heard, he, he, he called a Zoom meeting. Hear me now. Now see with the preacher. As soon as Satan heard that truth is being preached, he called a Zoom meeting. And the, 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 the Zoom meeting title was Zoom Room of Doom. He sent the Zoom link to all the demons around the globe. Are you with me somebody? And we have demons from the east, north, west and south. As, listen, as whenever truth is being preached, Satan begins to plan a counter attack. He gathers the most deceptive demons from across the globe. And he asks each of them to type their suggestions in the chat. Are you seeing it? Are you with me? Ah, uh, follow this now. Follow this now. That will help to keep people in error. Even though this meeting is being planned. Even though the Bible speaks is being planned. He says, listen, give me some suggestions that will help to keep people in error. He asks the question, demons, what shall we do to keep our subjects? Now, any person who is not in Christ is a subject of the devil. Are you me somebody? Satan had you bound for years. He been whipping, whip your mother. He whooped your father. He whooped you. He whooped your children. He wants to crush all your generations. He doesn't want you to be liberated. And you know Satan works. He likes families. You know it's good when he catch you one at a time, one at a time. He wants to kill everybody. But he likes families and communities. 
Heard me somebody? That is his best strategy. When he can hold on an entire family or suppress an entire community in drugs and gambling and stealing and robbery. I heard me somebody. He lost that. He says, what could you do for us to keep our subjects from being baptized? Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, Satan, when people give their lives to Jesus, what could we do to keep our subjects from being baptized? We all were subjects of Satan. I want you to listen to me. Before we were baptized, for this reason, Satan hates when people give their lives to Jesus. When, listen, when people give their lives to Jesus, uh, there's a man who had a rum shop and he said, Pastor Smith, I am closing it off. I will no longer be selling rum to the community. When people give their lives to Jesus, great transformation takes place. Satan hates it. So look what happens. Satan begins to take comments from his demonic advisors one little demon typed in the chat one little demon typed in the chat now he is he's a foolish freshy he's fresh right if, you know they just come on the scene the people who know the least and have the least experience want to talk the most and so before he listen he 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 says trouble the weather trouble the weather Satan says, listen, delete that chat. Don't you know it's an online campaign? Come on. He thought it was a tent meeting. <laughs> he deleted that. Are you with me, somebody? Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, uh, comments started to come in. <laughs> Comments started to come in. Somebody said, rumor it that, that nobody will want to surrender to Christ during COVID. Satan says, uh-huh. This one sounds good. But then Satan begins to look what is happening around the world, across the Caribbean people. If they have to do profession of faith, if they have to do baptism once a week or once a month, are you me somebody? Uh, whatever has to be done, people are surrendering their lives to Jesus because they can see based on the signs that soon and very soon we are going to see the king. And so right now, while COVID is on, many people are surrendering their lies to Jesus Satan says delete that don't work another demon said well and he's this sophisticated type he said well you understand the context will call for curfew and so send a negative spirit to them for them to cancel because of the curfew aren't me somebody now the curfew is serving its purpose. Are you with me somebody? But God's purpose can work between and betwixt the purpose of man. Hear me somebody. And so that demon said, just send a negative vibe so that somebody may vote to postpone it. Satan says, yes, this one will work. And so this, this talk and thought begin to spread. But Satan then recognized who he was dealing with. Are you me somebody? He said, no, no, that won't work. Those people are our pathfinders. The musicians are master guides. The cameraman is a master guide. Hold on. If you don't watch it, those people will camp out there. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, Satan says, that won't work. Are you me somebody? The management of the team is a master guide the coordinator of the campaign invested master guide the preacher youth director master guide the secretary invested master guide the treasurer master guide the president master guide former youth director be careful those people will camp at the church if they have to preach the gospel withdraw that suggestion Pastor Clark, you are ready to camp. Help me somebody. Leaders are campers. Ladies and gentlemen, I was moved 
when members of the team said that if they have to sleep on pews, are you with me somebody, to follow the rules that, that will lend for safety, whatever. Listen, the team members were prepared to come and sleep in this church so that the gospel can go forward to the world. Satan said that wouldn't work and the worst thing about it when it's curfew, people will have to go home early. And by seven, when the Bible speaks, people are free. I need somebody. Everybody's home at seven o'clock. Satan says, withdraw. That wouldn't work. Then another demon, because his friend was taking a battering on the floor, he placed in the chat, send power outage. He wasn't thinking. He wasn't thinking. Now, Satan says, listen, take that back. If you send power outage, now people have been having blackouts across. Are you with me, somebody? Power outage. This is international. Power outage. Not blackout. Power outage. People have been having power outage. Are you with me, somebody? You know, I thought that we only had power outage in Guyana. But I've been traveling. Are you with me, somebody? Everybody, everybody gets a little bit of blackout, if you please. Satan said it wouldn't work. Because you know what people are doing? When people have power outage, as soon as the lights come on. One person told me that they started looking at the meeting at 12 in the night. Are you with me, somebody? Some people look at it in the morning for devotion. So this thing is stored online. People can go back and listen to the files, listen to the messages. Satan says it would not work. Things were getting tense. Another demon said, tell people not to believe in the Bible. Satan thought for a moment. But he recognized that there's no other book that could be compared to the Bible. The Bible has stood the test of time. In fact, there was one time when they tried to get the Bible off of the globe. They tried to eradicate Christianity. And the more they burned the Bible, the more people studied the word. The more they attacked the Bible, the more people studied the word. Satan said, leave the Bible alone. It is a known fact that the Bible is no ordinary book. When the Bible speaks, it's the word of God. The meeting then gets theological. <laughs> One big voice, big mouth demon said, tell them not to believe in the commandments. The commandments is done away with. Satan says, uh, that strategy may not work because when you go to Revelation 22, you see, John didn't leave it for chance. The last chapter in the Bible, right down to the closing verses, just about the last eight or seven verses in the Bible. Revelation 22 verse 14. The Bible says, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have life to the tree of life and enter through the gates of the holy city. Ladies and gentlemen, the meeting is getting intense. It's getting all theological. Satan is, is flustered. He's about to give up. He's about to, to, to close the meeting. Then another one said, tell them that nobody knows which day is the Sabbath. If you can get rid of the Sabbath, you can get rid of the Creator. Aren't me somebody? Tell them that nobody knows which day is the Sabbath. And for a moment, Satan thought about it, but, but that wouldn't work, he said. Because the whole world knows which day is Good Friday? Heard me somebody. If you want to know which day is the Sabbath day, listen, ask, ask anybody in the world. Which day is Good Friday? Friday. The whole world knows that Jesus was raised on the first day of the week. Which day is the first day of the week? Sunday. The Bible says that after the preparation day, which we call Good Friday, the Sabbath drew on. I mean somebody. So after Good Friday, that day between Good Friday and 
the first day of the week which is called Easter Sunday. Now you know what is interesting? All week has a name. Easter Sunday, this Monday, Ash Wednesday, Thursday, right on to Friday. And, the, and, and, and it gets quiet in, be in between there. The world knows that between Good Friday and Easter Sunday, the Bible calls it the Sabbath day. We call it Saturday. It is the seventh day of the week. Satan says that wouldn't work. Everybody knows. And listen, you don't doubt, you know. Ask anybody who studies the Bible. Everybody knows which day is the Sabbath that God has blessed. Don't allow anybody to fool you. Even those who say they don't know, they know. The meeting gets a little warm. The devil is upset. He says, tell them. Another demon says, tell them. They don't need baptism. You know, there are some people who think they don't need baptism. They are bigger than God. I mean, somebody... Nobody can tell me they don't need baptism. They might tell you that. But the Bible is clear. Are you with me, somebody? They don't need. How could a person say they don't need baptism? In other words, you are saving yourself. In other words, when you die, you're resurrecting yourself. In other words, you're preparing a mansion in heaven for yourself. You don't need baptism. When a person says they don't need baptism, they mean they don't need heaven. They don't need God. They don't need Christ who died on the cross. They don't need his mercy. Jesus said in John 3 verse 5, Fairly I say unto you, Except a man be born again of the water and the spirit, he cannot see the kingdom of God. My friend tonight, I am saying baptism. You need baptism. It's a need. Don't allow the enemy's plan uh, to, to blind your eyes to this need. Are you with me, somebody? You need baptism. If you haven't given your life to Jesus, it is a need. It is the means whereby you are saying to the world, I am connected to Christ. It's the means whereby you are symbolically saying and accepting by faith that your sins are buried in Christ. But then, ladies and gentlemen, the devil was about to adjourn the, the Zoom room of doom. And an old demon typed in the chat. He says, Master Lucifer, I know an old trick. It's an old trick. Are you with me, somebody? Listen, the devil has been, has been condemning. The devil has been leading people to hell for years. These demons have been doing this for thousands of years. This demon says it's an, the oldest trick in the book. And then he types. He says, tell them to believe everything. To listen to the sermons every night. To tune in and to share. To say it is good. Tell them to believe everything. But why hurry? Just wait for another time. You see another time? That is the oldest trick in the book. Ladies and gentlemen, the demon said, It worked. It worked. Are you with me somebody? Ah, he says, And when they wait for another time, The Holy Spirit will leave them And will cut short their lives. He says, this old trick will always work. It's the oldest trick in the book. He said it worked on Felix in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 25, are you there? This trick worked on Felix. The devil is saying to you, believe everything, but don't get baptized. He is telling you, believe everything, but don't marry and move out. He is telling you, believe everything, but don't change. He is telling you, believe everything, that, but don't make a commitment now. He is, the devil, listen, any person that tells you to wait for another time is not of God. Even if it's your mother. 
If you're a mother and you, you're telling your, your teenage child to wait, 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 it is not of God. If you're a father and you, 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 are, you are using your fatherly influence to tell your child who is a teenager that can surf the net, write CXC, do SBAs, and you're saying to that child that they're not ready, something is wrong with you, and your speech is not of God. The demon said, this is an old trick that always works. It worked on Felix. Look at what the Bible says. I'm saying to somebody tonight, do not put off a decision for Christ. The Bible says, and after certain days, look at this. this. This is interesting. Look at this. Don't miss this now. And after certain days, when Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, which was a Jewess, he sent for Paul. Now, I wish I could have preached half as much as Paul. I mean, somebody. He sent for Paul and, and, and heard him. Now, now, Paul was preaching. He heard Paul preaching. Heard him concerning the faith in Christ. Are you with me, somebody? And Paul was preaching. Now, when Paul preached, Paul would reason. Are you with me, somebody? He would reason. He would set the case. What was he reasoning about? What was Paul preaching about? This is a big answer here. Now, look at this. Verse 25 says, And he reasoned of righteousness. There's, listen, when Paul preached, he preached about righteousness. He preached about righteousness. When John the Baptist preached, he preached about righteousness. When Peter preached, he preached about righteousness. There's some people who want me to preach like some other motivational speakers. But real motivation is from the Bible. Are you with me, somebody? Real motivation is the Spirit leading us to a better place in God. Real motivation is from Philippians. The Bible says it's God which work it in you. Both to will and to do his good pleasure. In my research, I discovered that motivation is really the process that stimulates you into action and sustains you during action. So when you see mission motivate, don't think that it is earthly motivation. Let me somebody... Are you listening to me, somebody? No, I need to clear the air. The Bible says it's God which worketh in you both to will and to do. Are you me, somebody? So the Spirit of God, somebody says motivation is, is, is that thing that, that ignites action and sustains action. In the Christian context, I'm saying to you that God is leading us to a life of righteousness. He wants us to start doing good. When Paul preached, are you me somebody? When Paul preached, Paul preached righteousness. The messages of the last days is not a message to invest in God. It's not a message to sow seeds in God. It's not a message to make money to Jesus. It is a message to live righteous lives. And so if you want to distinguish a biblical preacher, it is not a preacher that makes the sinner comfortable, but it's a preacher that calls the sinner out of sin into the righteousness of God. And so as long as you preach from the Bible, you must call sinners out of sin. I mean, somebody, some people say soften it. Soften what? Hand me somebody. Some people said soften it. Soften what? When Paul, listen, when Paul preached, this was an elite. Felix was an elite. And Paul preached righteousness. He preached temperance. Now what is temperance? Temperance is about living right. Temperance is about eating right. Temperance is about not destroying your body. So if Paul was around, Paul would have said, put down the weed, put down the drugs, put down the alcohol, put down the cannabis, put down the put down anything that will put you down. Ladies and gentlemen, the message to be preached in the last days is a message of righteousness. 
a message of judgment. Are you me, somebody? A message of temperance, a message of, of righteousness, and a message of judgment. Sometimes I scroll online and you don't hear a word about righteous living. You don't hear a word about temperance. You don't hear a word about the judgment and the coming of Jesus. There are some preachers who hardly mention that Jesus is coming again. Ladies and gentlemen, when Paul preached, I want to preach like Paul. I need somebody. I, Paul is my standard. I see Pastor Paul smiling. <laughs> Paul, you're my standard too. You're a fine young man. And as long as you continue to keep God's standard, you're my standard. <laughs> I need somebody. Now I want you to see it. When Paul preached, I remember I was in a particular place doing a campaign and this elite guy came. He pulled up with his BMW when nobody else around in that area had anything like it. And he said, I will, I will come to the meetings, Pastor Smith. And he came to the meetings and I am not sure what he expected to hear. But at the end of the meeting, he was trembling. He said, you know, I'm not quite, quite ready for this. Are you with me, somebody? Listen, when Paul preached, Felix was trembling. The Bible says he trembled when Paul said, you got to live right. You got to live right. Move out or get married. Move out or get married. You got to live right. You got to live right. Stop wrecking your body with what is unclean. You got to live right. You got to live right. Jesus is coming you gotta live right paul says and jesus himself will help you to live right felix began to tremble and he said go away paul go away and he's trembling he said i can't make it this time you know he's wrong you know he said go away some men need, know they need to pull the act together. You need to go back home to your wife and children. Uh, you're trembling. Don't tremble. Go home to your wife and children. They are depending on you. You are responsible for their future health, their future wealth, and their future prosperity. Don't tremble on that bed of sin. Go home to your wife. So Felix trembled. Look at him. He's trembling now. He said, Paul... Go, go away. Go away. See, somebody's telling the child, hey, turn off that thing. Turn off the television. Shut down the phone. Go away. I, I, I can't deal with that now. He said, when I have a convenient season. Some people will only come to God out of convenience. He said, I will call for thee when I have a convenient season. But look, look. But ladies and gentlemen, history tells us that Felix died. And he never became a Christian. There was never a convenient season. If you are waiting for a con convenient season, you will wait until your eyes drop out. Are you with me, somebody? The demon said it didn't only work with Felix. It worked with Agrippa. Look at this in Acts 26. Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? Acts 26 verse 27. I know that thou believest. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Paul was preaching again. Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuaded me to be a Christian. Almost thou persuaded me to be a Christian. I remember when I was preaching at the age of 14 in Stanley Town. There's a young man there who was at the meeting. And I was making an appeal. I didn't know at the time what was going on in his heart. Heard me somebody? The following day I got word from up the road. He told some guys on the street. Boy the boy Marvin. When he was talking last night I almost went up. He almost went up. After that meeting came to an end the year was 2000. I didn't see him back in about two years. And when I saw him, I couldn't understand a word he was saying. In fact, he told me he came from the hills and he's visiting Babylon. But I know he was in Stanley Town. And he said that he planned his children them. He's talking about cannabis sativa. 
And he didn't allow anybody to trouble his children. He used up all of them. And his words are so swift that people can't hear it. Now I was hearing everything he was saying. In fact, he was talking a little slow. That brother, I don't know if he's alive or dead. But I know that he fried his mind. Are you with me somebody? Ladies and gentlemen, I know also that many of his, of his relatives, are you with me somebody? Have excelled and moved on. That young man said to me, he said to some guys on the block, that he almost went up. You know when I thought of that a few years after when I was in Trinidad? And even when I think of it now, I said I wish I appealed for another minute or two. So that that almost could have moved from almost to a good decision. There's some people listening every night and they almost do the right thing. <laughs> Somebody almost put out, put out a man who's not married, married, married to them. <laughs> Honey, don't almost put him out. Find me somebody. You can't, you, listen, don't almost stop. Stop. Don't almost quit. Quit. Don't almost be baptized. Be baptized in the name of Jesus. Don't almost do right. Do right. Are you listening to me? Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible tells me that Agrippa died and he never became a Christian. He almost. There are some people who are right on the border of transformation. God wants to do something great for you. Make that decision for Christ. Click on the link. Call the number on the screen. The little demon went on to tell Satan. The Holy Spirit says today, get them to put it off so he will leave them. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says, the Bible instructs us clearly in Genesis 6 and verse 3. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man. God is trying with us. God is trying with us. He is trying with us. I need mean somebody, but God said, my spirit will not always strive. Ladies and gentlemen, when Satan heard the oldest trick in the book, Satan accepts the suggestion. He says, this definitely will work. My friends tonight, ladies and gentlemen, Satan's most powerful weapon is the word wait. Hand me somebody. Satan's most powerful weapon is the word wait. The moment you decide to win is the moment you begin to win. So this is your moment to decide to begin to win. Satan will tell you wait. God wants a victory for you and Satan is telling you wait. God wants to answer your questions and Satan is telling you wait. God wants to solve your problems now and Satan is telling you wait. God wants to give you peace now and Satan is telling you wait. God wants to give you joy and Satan is telling you wait. God wants to deliver you my friend and Satan is telling you wait. He is telling you to wait in chaos. Wait in turmoil. Wait in bondage. Wait in the abuse. Wait in guilt. Wait in depression. Wait in, are you with me somebody? Self-destruction. Satan is telling you to wait in substandard. Wait in mediocrity. Wait in that which is not of God. God is saying come now to something better. Listen, when God calls you, he calls you to something better. Young man, I know you're in trouble. What you need now is not a gun. What you need is a God. What you need is not a gun. What you need is God. Young man, I know you're in trouble. But my God can, can supply all your needs. My God can deliver you. Young lady, what you need now is not another man. What you need is God. What you need is not a boyfriend. What you need is God. What you need, I need me somebody, is not more money. What you need is God. There's some people who are going to search and search and you can't find happiness. You can't find peace. You can't find joy. You can't and find tranquility what you need is not another paycheck what you need is not another business what you need is not another home not another property what you need is God
And God says today, God says you need him today. The songwriter says, if you never needed the Lord before, you sure do need him now. People are dying every day, my friend. They're, they're, they're flames on this earth that, that seem to be wiping out large sections of the globe. Are you me something, buddy? Something is irregular on planet earth. I'm saying that, that, that this whole lifestyle of oh, is, is changing rapidly, ladies and gentlemen. Men, while there's still wars brewing silently, some wars might be fought even above our head. Are you listening to me, somebody, ladies and gentlemen? For this reason, the Holy Spirit says today, Hebrews 3, verse 7, the Bible says, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost said, Today, if you hear his voice, if you hear his voice. Harden not your hearts as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. God is saying, listen, Israel hurt me. Israel really gave God some licks. They broke his heart. God was trying to speak to them every day for 40 years. And still, they didn't hear. God is trying to speak to some of you for 40 years, every day. God has been speaking for, to, to some of you all day, every day for the last three weeks. God is using love, you know. The enemy is using tricks. Second Corinthians 6 and verse 2, the Bible says, For he said, I have heard in the accepted time, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. God is saying, I nursed you like a child. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Are you listening to me, somebody? The Philippian jailer, when he heard the good news, he was baptized the very night. Acts 16 and verse 33, the Bible says, and the and he took them the same hour of the night. Ladies and gentlemen, some people party at 8.30. It's 8.30 now. Some people party at 8.25. Some people gamble at 8.25. Some people go to the movies at 8.25. Tonight at 8.25, somebody needs to say yes to Jesus. Are you listening to me? It is, listen, this jailer, the Bible says in verse 33, and they took him the same hour of the night and washed their stripes. Listen, some people don't know what is washing because you have a washing machine. So you've never seen the process. Are you with me? When I was growing up, there was a wonderful East Indian lady, very pleasant. She passed. Her name was Roni. Roni. People from Stanley Town will know who I'm talking about. One of my fond memories of Roni, something I saw very often. Roni had a bridge that, in fact, there were two bridges, two, two, two pieces of wood. One was a little higher, and the other one was lower to the trench. I'm from the countryside. And at that time, the, the water was clean enough. It wasn't polluted. And many persons used it for washing. Very often, many times I'm going to part, find the club. I, I, I recall seeing this. Ronnie would have a pile of clothing. Aren't me somebody? Her husband worked with the cane industry. Aren't me somebody? And he worked the field. And so his clothing will be dark and dusty. I would see Roni, aren't me somebody? Very often, I could, I could remember it as if it's yesterday. Somebody from Stanley Tong need to type in the chat, he's speaking the truth. She would bend over in that trench. 
and she will put the clothes in our it, it was it was a sight to see as a boy and she had something called a beta I mean somebody I mean and Roni would Hurt me somebody. She hit it enough not to damage it. Hurt you me somebody. And she would wash that clothing so that the next day somebody is saying, what are you saying? That's the same thing the washing machine is doing. What do you think is going on in there? You think it's liming? It's the same principle. What do you think your clothes doing in the washing machine? Think it's a chemical process? Yes, it involves that. But there's a physical process. And so Ronnie will take this bitter, pet him, pet him, pet him, pet him, pet him, pet him. And she'll turn it over. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. And she would whip the other side. Are you listening to me? But the clothing is not being damaged. It is being cleaned. When you see Ronnie line the clothes off on the bamboo, it's better than some of them who have washing machine. I me somebody. Ladies and gentlemen, what she was doing was cleaning up the clothing. I know that the last three weeks it has been a bumpy ride for some of you. Some of you said that preacher is too bold faced. He is too loud mouth. Can't he tone it down a little bit? I'm speaking and I'm saying that for some people it felt like a beating. You know what is it? You, you living in a, in a home with a man who is not married to you and the preacher is talking about that. You will want him to tone it down. It feels like a beating. But it's not really a beating. It's a washing. Are you listening to me, somebody? The last three weeks for some person, some of you, you sit down, some of you, you sit in your home and you enjoy it and you laugh because I can't talk about secret sins. I don't know. I don't know what you're doing. And listen, people, sin has gotten so invasive and dangerous that there are some sins that exist we don't even know about. Are me, somebody? There are some households where fathers sleeping with daughters and mothers know and all those things. Listen, there's some things you don't need. Listen, there are things that are happening that I can't preach about. I can't mention it because I don't even know. The Bible says that, that the hearts of men have become wicked. When I was in Trinidad, I read in the paper. I don't usually call the island. I've been to several places. But you know, I'm also a Trinidadian. I lived there for five years. So I think I am enough Trini. I'm Trini to the bone. Don't you say amen? <laughs> Somebody say no. But in order to say no, you have to be a Trinidadian. But I eat more pilau than some Trinidadians. But I remember when I was there that I read in the papers one day that, that a boy, a young boy, his friends took a mop stick. I don't even know how to say it. All I can say is the mop stick disappeared. He died. Now there's no way I can think about that happening. And so some people feel a little comfortable because what you are doing is on no script. It is so wicked. Ladies and gentlemen, when the gospel comes, look at the language Acts uses. Acts 33. The Bible says, and he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes. How do you wash their stripes? The Bible says, they were baptized right away. It is never a delay. Delay is dangerous. Are you with me, somebody? Brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters. 
that same night when they heard the gospel they were baptized straight away but the big question is why does God say no why does God say no Proverbs 27 verse 1 one of my good friends every time I recite this verse I remember him we're in part find the clubs together. We celebrated his birthday about two weeks ago. But every time I read this verse, I remember him. It says, Proverbs 27, 1. We learned this as pathfinders. Boast not thyself of tomorrow. For thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. There are some people keep saying tomorrow, but tomorrow never comes. Jesus says today. Jesus spoke of a man who made plans for his life, but did not plan for God. Many people are making plans for their lives, but they're not planning for God. He thought he could deal with God at a convenient time. In Luke 12, 20, the Bible says that this man built a barn and he was planning to extend the barn. All he was doing was planning for his life without planning for God. When a multi-billionaire like Steve Jobs talks about the fact that nothing you acquire could really prepare you for that final hour. The Bible says to this man, but God said unto him, thou fool, this night, thou soul shall be required of thee. Life is very uncertain. Some people are saying tomorrow, but tomorrow may never come. Some people have been saying tomorrow for the last 20 years. I'll stop tomorrow. I'll be better tomorrow. You can't be better on your own. Only God could help you. I will do it differently tomorrow. It's not tomorrow, it's now. Click on the link now. Click on the link now. Jesus is inviting you, my friend, into a deep relationship. And even as this song ministers to your heart, I want you to click on the link. Call the numbers on the screen. Are you with me, somebody? Listen to me, the time to give your life to Jesus is now. The time to get it right is now. Jesus said, here I stand, won't you please Hallelujah. let me in. Yes. And you say, mm -hmm. I wait tomorrow. Yes. Who supplies all your needs? Amen. And you say, I know, but tomorrow, tomorrow, I give my life. Today, God says, Today, my friend. Click on the link today. Call the number on the screen today. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. Ladies and gentlemen, God is trying to deliver somebody. Who's going to sing next? I want you to understand this when you sing. God is going to try to deliver somebody tonight. And they're saying tomorrow. Somebody is locked down in sin tonight. And they're saying tomorrow. May this song give somebody the impetus and strength to click on the link tonight. 
to call for, for baptism tonight. Because tomorrow is not certain. Jesus said, Here I said, Today is your day. Take my hand. Today is your day. Today is your victory day. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I am he, who he wants to supply all your needs. Don't allow anybody to promise you anything. God will supply all your needs. Yes. Give your life to Jesus today. Tomorrow is very uncertain. Don't boast about tomorrow. Don't boast about tomorrow. Don't boast. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let's pause a while. Let's we, we gonna we're gonna get there. Let's pause a while. There is no person living on this globe. Who should not understand directly why God says no. You see 2020. We had a lot of plans. In 2020. In 2019. The tomorrow of 2020 looked grandeur. And me somebody. We had plans for January. We had plans for February. We, we, we had a calendar organized. Are you me somebody? Some people had plans for promotions and, and plans for increase and, and plans for more land and, and more homes and, and business deals. Some people had plans for, for cruise ships and plans to travel the world and, and plans to, to spread their wings. And uh, listen, 2020, 2019 looks so good. By 2020 so many words to be, to be filthy rich are you me somebody 2019 looks so good there were so many people who are to be alive on cruise ships right now listen hold on nobody on the globe right now you see when when this message was preached 20 years ago and 10 years ago there were some people who didn't understand it but any basic reason or tonight Listen, even the preacher had a lot of plans for 2020. Find me somebody. You gotta watch some dates go by. When I when I look at my my, my agenda, my diary, and, and my, my plans, I smile. I look at some dates and I smile. Hey, you are supposed to be here on that date <laughs> and there in that place. No, no. You are planning. For 2020 are you following me somebody some people are planning to come to Christ after they they put their own plans in place but brother come on you do not know what tomorrow holds that is why God says today that's why God says today Colwyn that's why God says today. Jesus said, here I Somebody needs to click on the link. We're about to close now. We're about to close now. Many persons have given their lives to Jesus. And tonight is your night. Tonight is the night to live right. Tonight is the night to fly straight. Tonight is the night to get it right. Don't do it tomorrow. Tonight, tonight, tonight. Who's going to pray with me tonight? Give your lives to Jesus tonight, my friend. Yes. Many persons have said yes. Tonight is your night. Tonight is your night. 
Tonight is the night for the Jones. The night for the Alfreds. The night for the Smiths. The night for the Watsons. The night for the Washingtons. The night for the Sankos. The night for the Clarks. The night for the Chichesters. The night for the Mons. The night for the Williamses. The night for the Thompsons. The night for the Harrys. The night for the Sings. The night for the Passads. Tonight is your night. Tonight is an important night. People around the world are making decisions for Christ. To all the brethren at the Jamaica church, and your friends that are with you, tonight is your night. To those listening from England, tonight is your night. Those from Canada, tonight is your night. Those from New Jersey, tonight is your night. Those from New York, those from Manhattan, those from Miami, those from Jamaica, Those from Grenada. Those from Burbies. Tonight is your night. All those from Esequibo. Tonight is for your night. Those from Wauna. Somebody from Wauna tonight. Make that decision for Jesus. Listen. Somebody from Bartika. Tonight is the night for somebody from Bartika. Call the number on the screen. Click on the link. Somebody in Bartika come this weekend need to give their lives to Jesus. If you're from Bartika and the Spirit of God is moving on your heart, give your life to Jesus right now. Yes, God says no. Somebody from the West Bank of Demerara Someone from West Coast, Babis. Somebody in quarantine. Give your life to Jesus. We have ministers scattered across the nation. Ready to take your call. Somebody from Linden. Oh yes. This is a big weekend for Linden. We're going to have a massive baptism in Linden. Amen. This is a big weekend for Georgetown. Listen. We have people from all over the world who are saying yes to Jesus. I've been contacting ministers in other fields who are preparing candidates to baptism. Won't you say amen? Wherever you are in the globe, you click on the link. We have the Seventh-day Adventist church is a global church. And we have loving ministers across the world. It is just one phone call a week. Tonight I'm happy. Because the devil's trick was exposed. It's the oldest trick on the book. You want, listen, you want to get it right together now. The devil is telling you wait. It's the oldest trick in the book. He's going to make you wait until you make the biggest mistake. I'm appealing for somebody who's struggling. Right now. Some of you, you are comfortable in your home with your, your children and your family and your husband. I mean, you got it intact. God bless you. Pray for somebody who's struggling. Somebody is struggling tonight. Pray for somebody. Come to Jesus, my friends. I'm happy because Jesus is, is inviting you to safety. 
We are about to close now. We are about to close. My friends, as we close in the stillness of the night, the Spirit of God is moving across Guyana. The Spirit of God is moving. Right now, cinemas are closed. Malls are closed. You're home. This is a beautiful opportunity to speak to God. In the stillness of the night, make a decision that will change the course of your life. Make a decision, my friend, that will change the course of your life. Young man, I'm appealing to you tonight. I am, I am pleading with you. Try Jesus. Young lady, listen. You can never fail with him. Never. Many persons promise you things and they never came through. But God's word is always sure. Click on the link. Call the numbers on the screen. Join me in prayer right now. As we thank God for the individuals who said yes. And many more are saying yes. Let us bow our heads wherever you are. Loving Father and God, creator of the universe, the devil says wait. He wants us to wait in a place of uncertainty. But God has called us now to a place of certainty. Loving Father and God, tonight in the name of Jesus, we ask that your Holy Spirit will Move across this land. Move across Burbies. Move across the streets and the highways. Move across Esiquibo and Mazaruni and across this great land. Move across Demerara. Move across the globe right now to every home of every listener. May every person that is battling win that battle for Jesus by choosing baptism today. There's some young man who has gone astray who's coming home today and you're happy. There's some family that has drifted away, Lord. And tonight we celebrate. There's some, some neighbors who have, been, who have been at it for years, who have been battling, oh God, but, but because of your word, there's peace in the community tonight. Dear God, there's some person struggling with an addiction tonight. Struggling with a secret sin. Struggling for, to make a decision for good. I, I beg of you, O oh God, that you will deliver every listener. Bless us tonight, O oh God, we pray. May your holy angels minister to us. And to those persons who are to decide me, give them the power and the strength to click on the link, to call the number on the screens, and to be baptized in Jesus' name. Thank you for exposing the devil and for showing us that delay is dangerous. Bless us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you, my friend. You have made the best decision. A decision for Christ is the best decision. See you tomorrow night. The message is titled, How Far is Too Far? How Far is Too Far? God bless you. See you tomorrow night uh, when we will go to the Bible to hear from His Word. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Because
Thank you for tuning in to the Bible Speaks Empowerment Series. We know that God blessed you in some significant way. We continue tomorrow night at 7 p.m. You can find the broadcast on number one, the Guyana Conference of Seventh-day Adventist YouTube channel. You can find the broadcast on number two, the Guyana Conference of Seventh-day Adventist Facebook page. You can find the broadcast on the Channel 2 or Safe TV television station. You can find the broadcast on number 4, the Guyana Conference of Seventh-day Adventist website. To get to the website, 
simply Google Guyana Adventist with a S, A D V E N T I S T S, Guyana Adventist.org. Then click the word live on the top left hand corner of the web page. Remember, for prayer requests, you can call 615-9902. For prayer requests, please call 615-9902. Someone will be online to take your call. Pass the word along. Tune in early. Listen prayerfully. And let the Bible speak to you. See you tomorrow night. Goodbye and may God bless you and your family.